Joe Turner from Leapfrog Fight TV, and I'm here in Colchester in Essex with Stuart Barlegs. How's said it going, right. mate? Yeah, that's the I one. I said it right. There we go. I'm so happy. I normally say everyone's name wrong, but how's, how's life in general for you, mate? Let's just catch up. Oh, I have a good life, mate. I'm happy. Yeah, training the boys. Life's good. So. What's, a, what's a week for you? A standard week? This gym, mate, pretty much. This gym, I've got a few other business to run, and then obviously spending time with my family, so I'm busy all the time. So, yep, it's good. Let's talk about you in terms of martial arts. Mm -hmm. Where did it begin? It's the most interesting question that I like to ask the coaches. Yeah. Because it's normally a rundown gym, or like we were saying earlier on, like back when you were fighting as such, it was never the same as it is now. There's a lot less no, it's money changed. involved. Yeah, it's changed. Things like that. So tell me, first pair of boxing gloves. It's the same old thing. It's similar to what he said. I walked into my first gym, loved it. I'd done like kickboxing before and some other things. My mate said, come down to this Thai boxing gym. Went there once. And that's the same old story. That's it. What gym was that? Uh, Monk on Dam in Essex. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's Dam, down yeah. there, yeah. I think it's shut down now. But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah uh, so. Chris, is it? Yeah, Chris. Chris, Chris yeah, Warren, yeah. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Bike. So the journey, where did it begin? Almost, you said, walked into Monk on Dam. What made you kind of take the next step into fighting or even what made it addictive to you to even want to fight? Same thing. I wanted to obviously get into the fight. I just loved it. I walked in there, same old story. Loved the culture, loved the sport. That's it. And I just saw the, I think it was Jason Wooden was the pro fighter down there, which also had one of my good mates now. Looked at him, right, okay, that's what I want to do. And it's the same old story, mate. That's it. And then opening the gym as such obviously you've had a nice career when when at what point in your career did you open the gym i was finding it hard to get down to the gym it was taking a lot of time up it's like an hour and a half each way oh right and doing that five times a week is, <laughs> is, it wasn't a lot of fun yeah so i started to do a bit of teaching down here down with a boxer down here had a, a little gym down here so i started there and then we got this place about a year later. And that was back in 2009, I think it was. And what made you almost go, do you know what, I need to start my own... I know you said it, that travelling for yourself was a bit of a nightmare, but what made you actually think, do you know what, I want to run a gym now? I think I always wanted to do it. I think it's a, obviously pass it on what you've learned and keep the sport going and stuff like that. I think that's the main thing. And obviously, I was still fighting and I didn't want to drive all the way down there. So it was like a, a double-edged thing that I wanted to do. Mm. So... The gym itself, are there mm. any particular goals that are set for the future or anything like that? Or even the current fighters, where do you want them to kind of be? Is there is there a specific plan moving forward? Uh, not really. Obviously, we've been established quite a while. We're doing all right in all all the disciplines we do. We've the, obviously got the guys, the MMA, they're doing really well. The boxing guys are doing well. We're doing all right as well. The Muay Thai, obviously, it's hard to keep people to, to stay at the that sort of level. They sort of drop off on C or B. Very few get future a sort of thing so mm. yeah we're doing all right i think uh he's got a big future in front of him definitely mm. yeah so moving forward like you were saying the cba kind mm. of rule set muay thai wise do you believe in what rob's doing on the shows is in sticking everyone in a pair of elbow pads i absolutely love it i think it's the best i think there's another person i can't remember who else who's doing it as well i think um is it spirit games i think they've done it as okay. well and i think it's the best thing I think it made the fights a lot more interesting. And it's probably one of the shows where I actually sat there and I watched all the shows. I watched every single fight. Mm. Obviously, when I went in the change room. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. obviously, you... yeah, clinching is completely different when you add elbows to the mix. You don't have to worry about elbows. You just have to worry about not being kneed or not being thrown. Or I think it puts A class on too much of a pedestal when you have to work your way up. So I remember when I started and you just like, it seemed like a big thing that you had to work towards. But then you'd fly out to Thailand and you'd just fight with elbows anyway. It's like my second fight was with elbows. Then I'll come back and do C class. It's like, it's like it's taking bit... the it's like taking the free kicks away from football. It, it's yeah. just it is. I just think it's easier for them to learn straight away. And for example, Rio, that's one of his best weapons that he uses. And for me, that's why I had to take him from. Luckily, these were, they were doing elbow pads. Otherwise, I, didn't, I won't jump him back down to B now. That's why I had to put him up into A, and he is good enough to do it to start yeah, off doing it. So I think them shows are definitely winning doing it that way. Definitely. Do you think definitely. it's the future in terms of a lot of shows are going to start taking? I notes? wish they would. I feel like I couldn't fight on a show now where I'd have to go backwards. It's right for the lads who don't know or they're not good with elbows. All right, but it's just easier to do. 
put them in with the elbow pads. You're teaching on. them Muay Thai. It's actual Muay Thai. As a sport. Then. And you don't have to go, right, no, 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 we don't do that yet. Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost like you have to almost baby take them baby steps forward with them. Whereas, like you said, you, you're almost just chucking them straight in. I think it's best. It works out better for them. Are they allowed to have been... There's another two of the young lads. They're fighting on that show. And they're so much better because now they're sparring with elbow pads on and they look better. There's, it's, I think it's better. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The fight's coming up. Can you shed any light on what you think of the fights of what you your lads have got going on? Um, obviously, the other lads, they're just sort of up and coming. They're really a good standard. They're sort of following his suit and they, they've jumped levels so quick that I've never seen before. Rio is one of them. I've never seen anyone come and change like he has in that like amount of time. I was saying in his interview, I was shocked to hear about how long he's been training for. I've I was never expecting seen him to say like a kid. No, that's what I mean. So... I've never seen it that quick before, and he was doing stuff in his first fight I don't see A-class fighters doing. And I couldn't believe what he was pulling off in his first fight, and then the way he talks, his attitude, I just know he's going to be something big. And the last time I said this, it was Arnold Allen. He was in it, when he first came in our gym, I said, that kid's going to be massive. For his first fight, and you could just tell, it's the same thing with him. I guarantee you he's going to be big. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am indeed. He's sat with a massive grin on his face. <laughs> so, mate, I can't help but thank you for your time. I yeah, really brilliant. appreciate the little sit down. So no worries, mate. Good you. to have you down. Thank you very much.